Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Esper, thank you uh, for your service uh, to our country. Uh, in, Secretary Esper, in, um, in 2014, Secretary Hagel uh, issued new gui guidance for upgrading certain discharges uh, to honorable. The Hagel policy directed review boards to give, uh, quote, liberal consideration mm -hmm. to the possibility that PTSD uh, contributed to a veteran's loss of their honorable uh, discharge. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I introduced legislation to codify the principles of this uh, policy into law. Uh, the Fairness for Veterans Act was included as Section 535 of the fiscal year 2017 NDAA. And I recently sent a letter to the Department of Defense to get an update on the implementation of this law. Uh, I think you'd agree uh, that troops that are suffering from mental trauma associated with their service uh, should not have their records tarnished uh, over an episode of misconduct that may be related to the trauma that they're actually suffering from. So my question to you, sir, is can I get your assurance that this law will be executed as intended under your leadership if confirmed, and that I can get your commitment to keeping Congress informed of the law's implementation? Yes, sir. As you described it, it, it seems to make eminent sense. Uh, you know, from my time in uniform, of course, I, I spent my time in war. I know the impacts. Uh, I think things like that go a long way to signaling that we understand that, that these things happen, that uh, uh, damage, harm is not just physical, it can be mental, and that uh, it also goes a long way to us addressing any stigmatization with regard to mental, mental health issues. Well, I appreciate that commitment, and, and I'm hearing from some of my constituents that the, the wait times of over 12 months for a decision to appeal uh, are occurring, uh, and I'd certainly like you to look into what the department needs, including support from Congress to expedite these decisions of uh, status upgrades and hope to get your commitment. Yes, sir, the, I mean, the bureaucracy on these things is terrible. We, we need to just go after it hard, particularly in, in matters involving, you know, life and health and those things. Pe we just, people can't wait for 12 months to get something like this addressed. So you have my commitment to go after the bureaucracy on that as well. Great. I appreciate that. Secretary Esper, I'd like to, uh, to quote from Secretary Mattis uh, his letter of resignation on uh, December 20th of uh, 2018. He addressed it to President Trump, and he said, and I'm going to quote this, uh, because you have the right to have a Secretary of Defense whose views are better aligned with yours on these and other subjects, I believe it's right for me to step down from my position. And in his uh, resignation letter, uh, he emphasized the value of alliances and the true value to the United States uh, to, uh, of the, uh, and of the international order. And let me quote again from his uh, letter. He said, uh, it uh, must be conducive to our security, prosperity, and values, and we are strengthened in this effort by the solidarity of our alliances, uh, end of quote. Uh, these principles, of course, are difficult to put a, put a price on, but they were clearly uh, essential to Secretary Mattis and something that he was willing to resign as Secretary of Defense. Uh, so my question to you is, uh, tell me a little bit about your view on the importance of the U.S.-led international order to support our security, prosperity, and our values. And would you be a Secretary of Defense with views more aligned with Secretary Mattis or more aligned with President Trump? Well, Senator, I, you know, as I said in my opening statement, uh, as I messaged to the field on my first day as acting secretary, the note I sent to the field said that I fully support the national defense strategy to include explicitly a line of effort two, which talks about building alliances and strengthening our, our partnerships. So I'm fully committed to that. I realize the importance of it. Uh, the international rules-based order uh, in the wake of World War II is the order that has ensured prosperity and security now for 75 years, and I'm fully committed to that. I think that is the one thing that's certainly under threat from Russia and certainly China. Uh, China wants to reorder the global order. Uh, they want to do everything from replace institutions to replace the dollar. And so I'm fully committed to that. I see the, the big picture, if you will, and uh, that's how I commit these problems. It's how I grew up addressing these problems, if you will. So is it safe to say you're, you're more closely aligned to the views of Secretary Mattis than President Trump? Uh, I, I don't know that you can, I, 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 I don't know where to pick b between the two, if that will, but clearly I share Secretary Mattis's views and I've expressed that publicly. Well, is there an issue or policy that you would be asked to support uh, that would run counter to your values and principles? Would you be willing to resign if it ran counter to your values and principles? Uh, you know, I, at my time in the Army, I grew up with this view that if uh, anything, if you're asked to do anything that is illegal, or immoral, or unethical, then that would be the point at which you have to consider resignation. And you'd be willing to do that? Absolutely. Thank you.